interesting topic and uh, I couldn't see much material in this, uh, this area because uh, this is a very philosophical discussion, I would say. Um, uh, so, uh, why, why Pacific Consciousness? Because this is one of the university themes and uh, when we come to the area of teaching and learning, then we talk about uh, problem solving, creativity and Pacific Consciousness. And uh, the bigger issue is what is consciousness? And uh, there's a standard Wikipedia definition and a few definitions about the level of sentience, awareness, subjectivity, the ability to experience, feel, wakefulness, and several uh, other things uh, about the mind. Uh, consciousness, I recall that uh, I'm, in, I'm in ResearchGate and sometimes I participate uh, uh, in discussions in research gate and there was one one question on what is consciousness what is the nature of its origin and that question the answers kept on going on for six months and there were more than 1500 I think it went to 2000 answers and these were like big 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 paragraphs uh, of uh, answers by top professors top academics all around the world in uh, areas of social science psychology psychiatry and medical sciences they all wanted to define what is consciousness and so far it is very difficult to define truly what is consciousness but we have some general uh, definitions of uh, are you conscious do you have consciousness and these are the bigger issues and and then there's uh, some spiritual metaphysical questions relate to it when you talk about consciousness the duality the mind body problem Will you be there when your your mind uh, your body is dead? So these are the the, the top questions uh, uh, asked through the ancient times uh, in metaphysics, religion, and so on. And still, philosophers uh, are trying to stretch the hair with this uh, kind of uh, definitions, but uh, we cannot go anywhere. And then, when we talk about machine consciousness, artificial intelligence, and machine consciousness. Um, AI people, they usually question the psychologists and philosophers. First, you define consciousness, tell us what is consciousness, then we can think about modeling consciousness or making artificial consciousness. But the issue is uh, it's not so simple. So, we know that consciousness is something, the brain, something projected from the brain or something that inherits the brain uh, somehow. and. Uh, a lot of waves around, you can view it, and uh, the guy meditating. So, so there are, the, as uh, some philosophers say, there are the level of consciousness, and sometimes your state of mind defines or is strong when it comes to level of consciousness that you have. When you are angry, for example, you project a certain uh, uh, level of consciousness and your aggressive behavior will define how you feel. Um, similarly, when we talk about Pacific consciousness, there's something to do with the region, something to do with the Pacific Islands and uh, some of the problems that we have faced throughout the history of the Pacific nations and the bigger problems that we have, such as climate change, environmental problems, and so on. And we have culture, we have traditional religions, we have art, creativity. And we have new cultures who have come to the Pacific and claim to be as Pacific as the old cultures. So what is Pacific? The definition of Pacific is it's a region, and then it is a culture. It is a way of lifestyle. And similarly, Pacific and consciousness are two very general terms that will change definition as with time and situation. And what is a software engineering? Software engineering is a creative process of trying to solve problems, um, real world problems, and the creativity required there, there is problem solving required there, and uh, how can we use those things, uh, the sole software engineering 
process is there, it's all defined and all well documented. Software engineers know what they are doing, why they are doing. But the question is, how can we incorporate specific consciousness into software engineering? The love for nature, the love for humanity, the love uh, or the concern about the environment of the bigger problems in the Pacific region. We cannot depend on, on uh, aid, foreign aid and foreign intervention to deal with our problems. So we need some sort of Pacific consciousness to be embedded into our program. And that is why we somehow try to encourage the students, in, especially in the postgraduate, when they come up with projects, the theme should relate to something in the Pacific. And um, there are big ideas uh, of that, that already established fields that can be used by the Pacific. For example, medical informatics, we know that we are really behind when it comes to medical informatics. You have uh, uh, your uh, medical record here at the university. If that closes uh, in a two, two, three weeks, that uh, medical um, uh, the department will close, as the university will close, and then you have to go to a doctor around Suva. You don't have the access to your medical record when you take it to when you go to another doctor. So the doctor will not be aware of your medical problems. You may be given a medicine that you have had in the past some allergies that can uh, lead to further problems. Environmental awareness, governance and politics, culture and history, specific medicine. Um, security, police force, climate change. So I'm going to talk a bit more about detail in each of these areas here. Um, so uh, let, let's first talk about uh, mobile application development, which is very, very, uh, very interesting and new and now very, it can be used to promote the idea of Pacific consciousness. So today's presentation from the students, you are going to see that the students have embedded some sort of con specific consciousness thought in their projects, where they are building systems that are trying to tackle the problems that we have today in this nation when it comes to medicine. In future, we want to in our research group, we, want, we are going to work with projects that will have a, a just not better, some sort of a, um, that will feature or help the disabled persons, this, the disabled community. We want to develop, use these uh, um, features of our mobile phone, because uh, it's basically a computer in the pocket, and this can be easily used by disabled persons for communication. The disabled persons, if we, we can use this to actually, this can become the eyes of a blind person. Why? Because there's a camera here. If we have enough intelligent software that are, is running in this phone, then it can be able to recognize people's faces and tell the blind person that it is that person that you met lately, which the blind person won't be able to do. Um, for example, th this is the whole idea where there's a this person is wearing a special camera and that camera uh, feeds data to the phone which has intelligent, artificial intelligence based softwares and it is guiding the person, telling them that maybe that is a face that you knew or it, in future it can do give, provide better guidance system. So this, uh, we are, I will have a master's student to work on this area hopefully from next year. Um, the other thing uh, that the disabled persons can use is automatic sign language translation. We know that the, the, the deaf community, they, um, they communicate with the sign language translation. But many of us here, we don't know the sign language ourselves. So if uh, the disabled person is working with a phone, or there's special software in your own phone, when you see a disabled person, you just open the, your phone and just keep carry 
code it like this and whatever the sign language it is making with the artificial intelligence computer vision based uh, processing it can recognize that those signs belong to that and with natural language processing there can be a speech record a speech transpire and then basically that input of the sign language can tell the non the person who doesn't know about sign language what that person is meaning and this kind of assistance in future will be provided in all banks all public uh, government departments and public places and this will help the disabled community and uh, these kind of projects uh, require funding and which is uh, not so easy to get in the region we have limited funding sources but to with time hopefully we are going to get to that uh, other forms of medical informatics we have cameras we have we can use intelligent processing software to uh, tackle a wide range of medical informatics issues and uh, last semester in the uh, internet computing uh, course there were a number of uh, presentations about uh, uh, mobile based online system that uh, doctors patients and pharmacists can all hook up to and there's a central system so anywhere you go in the country with your phone uh, if uh, you can have access to your medical record you know that it is very difficult for doctors for you to see what is written in a prescription what the doctor has written and that medicine that you are taking will affect your life in some way but still we trust in that and we give it to the pharmacy maybe the pharmacist knows maybe the pharmacist doesn't know there's a, a huge percentage of errors made in prescription search because of handwriting so if we have this type of systems mobile systems that actually have a better communication network between doctors and pharmacists and you so that you also know that if you click on that uh, that prescription you click a link and it it links uh, hyperlinks that this antibiotic then the wikipedia page opens or some other page opens and gives you more details why is this antibiotic given to you this is about your life and just blindly following the doctor's prescription is not the way for future medicine we need patients to be more aware of what they are actually taking and this all can happen through uh, intelligent software mobile based systems social media once again um, social media is very influential very influential and this is uh, the last one or two decades we know that there's feedback from the society in the past it used to be a one way travel where we used to only see news from a set of uh, uh news channels and networks and the the people they did not have a voice basically whatever the tv stations they find make it news that becomes news but now the social media has become so powerful that some of the news that are not popular but may be important for the society is seen and uh, that also uh, can link social media can link to pharmaceuticals marketing the type of uh, if there are some cures or some interesting articles about medicine then you can easily share in social media or maybe let's say you have been given a prescription by your doctor and then you saw the that this antibiotic you know that this is what this antibiotic is for according to modern scientific study and it should work for you and let's say that it did not work for you then what are you going to do maybe through social media you're going to share this antibiotic has adverse re reactions and the antibiotic website or the manufacturer can be given that feedback so this is a huge uh, the mobile uh, platform is a huge uh, application for scientific study to actually advance knowledge in medicine and in many other disciplines um, so um, how let's go back to pacific consciousness in software engineering we know that the pacific is full of art creativity dance and so many things and when we create make user interfaces when we make user interfaces for our websites in the pacific region we can incorporate some of those art uh, into the design of user interfaces and that will enable us to 
um, make use of specific consciousness, right? Uh, you see the nice massy design and a uh, few other part uh, things, uh, the mat and few other pictures you can easily incorporate into the user interface design for your mobile applications as well. And that will enable you to promote the specific culture in software engineering. Um, going back to the slides, I did not finish uh, the slides for the rest, but I'll just discuss it. Um, uh, the other issues uh, about environmental informatics, we have a number of species which are about to be extinct endangered and with the with the mobile phones with the software the whole of the population can report uh, give comments about some certain uh, plants or help us to collect data about certain plants and species um, governance and politics we know that we are going through a massive change in our political system going advancing through towards technology and so on, and democracy. We had a constitution process, and those processes could have been made easier and better and more transparent through mobile technologies, where the comments, as per each article of the constitution, we can have input from the general population, and that there can be statistical analysis of that input, and then a report can be given back to the general population. We will have, uh, we may have uh, the electoral process uh, uh, automated so that uh, within a few hours, using that your mobile phone, you can make a vote. There can be an a Android application or an uh, iPhone application by the government for voting for a person. You don't really need to go to that. So culture and history, you can use uh, the mobile technology to preserve the specific culture, preserve specific consciousness. How do you preserve specific culture with mobile phones? Because it has camera, there can be a website, there can be an application where you easily record the dance, a special type of dance happening in some village, some coral, in some island that is unique to that island, but we want to archive it. So you can easily record that and upload it into the system. And this is how the culture is preserved. We know that in the past, uh, we had a lot of people with knowledge about climbing a coconut tree. With, as time goes on, that knowledge is lost. And those types of knowledge need to be preserved. The other thing is specific medicine. You know that uh, in, in the villages, there is a special knowledge uh, that they don't really go to the hospital unless it's very serious little cuts and bruises, little other um, problems, there is medicine that they rely on. And that knowledge is now slowly being lost. We need to archive all this knowledge and um, build a database. And uh, this knowledge can be part of uh, our MBA, BS program in the future, so that our doctors are not just trained on Western medicine, but also know that there are herbs techniques, tools within the region that may be more beneficial to people in the region. We have uh, traditional Indian medicine, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine is doing a lot of wonders in very difficult uh, situations such as uh, diabetes, cancer, and so on. And uh, they have a lot of strength. And there is a lot of medicine here in Fiji, and we are easily losing that knowledge. Security. Uh, uh, you will see one of the presentations today. We'll talk about uh, electronic policing. We'll talk about uh, some mobile systems for the police force. Climate change, we can use the mobile technology once again to make smart uh, SMS uh, systems or actually um, tackle other climate change issues. People can give feedbacks and so on. So uh, these are some of the main uh, issues of uh, specific consciousness in software engineering. And I hope that uh, now or in the near future, when we do uh, university-based projects, then we keep the idea of specific consciousness, uh, theme, and improving humanity, improving our lifestyles, and 
the society here through the project